Hi, I'm Jessica. Before I get into this, please don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to hear more about my crazy life. Now let me tell you how everything went down. So my life isn't all that different from most moms. I'm in my early 30s, married to David, and we have the most amazing five-year-old daughter, Lily. She's the light of my life, honestly. I work from home as a graphic designer, which gives me the flexibility to be there for Lily. You know, the usual mom stuff. But then there's Evelyn, my mother-in-law. She's one of those people who thinks she knows everything about everything, especially when it comes to Lily. From day one, she's been all over me about how I'm raising my daughter. She's always nitpicking. David, bless his heart, loves his mom, but just doesn't see the problem. Or maybe he just chooses to ignore it. He's one of those guys who hates confrontation, so he always tries to smooth things over. My day usually starts pretty early. I get up, make Lily breakfast, and we chat about what she's excited to do at school that day. She's so bright and full of energy. After dropping her off, I settle into my work, but there's always this cloud hanging over me because inevitably, Evelyn will call or drop by unannounced to check in. She masks her control as concern, but I see right through it. A couple of days ago, we had a family dinner at our place. David insisted we invite Evelyn, even though I knew it would just be another night of her passive-aggressive comments. I set the table, cooked a nice meal, and tried to keep things light and positive for Lily's sake. As soon as Evelyn walked in, though, the tension started building. Oh, Jessica, she started as she looked around. I see you've decided to decorate the house your way. It's interesting. I bit my tongue, smiling as I offered her a seat. Then, during dinner, she just couldn't resist. Lily, she said in that sugary sweet voice that dripped with condescension, you really should eat more vegetables. You're looking a little pale. Jessica, are you feeding her enough iron? I wanted to scream, but instead I just clenched my jaw and said, she's perfectly healthy, Evelyn. Her doctor is very happy with her diet. But Evelyn wasn't done. You know, when David was Lily's age, I made sure he had a balanced meal every day. Maybe you should let me help out more. I know you're busy with your work. Busy with my work? Like I'm not giving my daughter everything she needs? I could feel my patience wearing thin. David, of course, just kept his head down, eating his dinner like nothing was happening. Typical. After dinner, while I was cleaning up, Evelyn cornered me in the kitchen. Jessica, I really think you need to be stricter with Lily. She's starting to get a bit too sassy for her own good. Kids need discipline. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Evelyn, she's five. She's learning to express herself. She's fine. She's talking back to me, and that's not okay. Maybe if you weren't so lenient, she wouldn't act out. It took everything in me not to tell her off right then and there. But I knew if I did, it would just create more problems with David. So I just nodded and said, I'll think about it. That night, after everyone left, I confided in my best friend, Rachel. I can't take it anymore, I told her. She's always criticizing everything I do, and David just won't stand up to her. Rachel, who's known me since high school, was as supportive as always. You've got to set some boundaries, Jess. If David won't back you up, you've got to make it clear to Evelyn that she's crossing the line. And don't leave Lily alone with her. Who knows what she might do if she thinks you're too soft. She was right, of course. I could feel that something was brewing, and that's where things really started to get out of control. I had just finished up a long day of work, eager to get home and spend some time with Lily. As I pulled into the driveway, something felt off. The house was too quiet, almost like it was holding its breath. I walked in calling out for Lily, but there was no answer. My heart started to race. I headed straight for her room, hoping she was just playing quietly. When I opened the door, I froze. Lily was sitting on her bed, her tiny body shaking with sobs. But that wasn't what shocked me. It was her head, completely bald. Her beautiful blonde curls, the ones she loved to braid with me, were gone. My mind couldn't process what I was seeing. Lily, what happened? I barely got the words out, my voice trembling. She... She said I was bad. Lily cried, her voice breaking. She said I talked back and needed to learn respect. 
I didn't want to, Mommy, but she made me. I felt a white-hot rage boiling inside me, stronger than anything I'd ever felt before. I knelt down and held Lily tight, trying to calm her down while my own anger threatened to consume me. It's okay, baby. I'm here. She's never going to hurt you again, I promise, I whispered, though my voice shook with fury. I knew I had to deal with Evelyn right now before I lost it completely. Evelyn was sitting in the living room. I stormed down the stairs. What the hell did you do to Lily? I demanded, barely able to keep from screaming. She was being disrespectful, Jessica. Children need to learn their place. I did what had to be done, Evelyn said. You shaved her head. She's five years old, Evelyn. How could you do something so cruel? My hands were shaking now, from both anger and the effort it took not to slap her right across the face. I did what you clearly can't, discipline. Maybe if you weren't so soft on her, she wouldn't be acting out, she replied. I felt something snap inside me. You need to leave, now. And don't think for a second that this is over, I said, my voice low but shaking with barely controlled rage. You're overreacting, Jessica. She'll get over it and one day she'll thank me, Evelyn said as she stood up, clearly not taking me seriously. Get out, I repeated, my voice deadly calm. She finally picked up her purse and walked out, but not before giving me a look that said she thought she'd won. David walked in just as she was leaving. What happened? He asked, his eyes darting between me and the front door. Go look at Lily. I said. He ran up the stairs and I heard him gasp when he saw her. What the? Jess, who did this? His voice was shaky as he came back down, his face pale. Your mother, I spat out. She did it because Lily talked back. David looked like he'd been slapped. I... I'll talk to her. We can work this out. Work this out? Are you serious? There's no talking this out, David. She crossed a line, and this isn't going to end with a simple apology. I shot back, cutting him off. She hurt our daughter. This isn't just about us anymore. He looked torn like he didn't know which side to take, but I wasn't going to wait for him to make up his mind. I'm done letting her get away with everything. If you won't stand up to her, I will. I said, grabbing my phone. Rachel picked up on the second ring. Rachel, I need your help. Evelyn went too far this time, and I'm not letting her off the hook. We're going to make sure she pays for this. I could almost hear Rachel's eyebrows raising on the other end of the line. What did she do? I took a deep breath, trying to keep my voice steady. She shaved Lily's head. All of it. She did it to punish her for talking back. Rachel was silent for a moment. Then I heard the anger in her voice. That's abuse, Jess. You need to document everything. Pictures, statements, whatever you can get, and we'll go from there. Already on it, I said, glancing over at David, who was still standing there looking like his world had just collapsed. I'm not letting this go. Rachel didn't hesitate. Good. And Jess, make sure you're ready for what's coming. This is going to get ugly. Trust me, I'm ready, I replied, hanging up and turning back to David. I'm going to take her down, David, and nothing's going to stop me. The day had finally come. I had spent weeks meticulously planning every detail, gathering every piece of evidence, and making sure there was no way Evelyn could worm her way out of this one. I wasn't just going to get justice for Lily. I was going to make sure Evelyn faced the consequences of her cruelty in the most public way possible. I invited the family over for a dinner that I knew Evelyn would be excited about. Everyone arrived on time, the usual small talk filling the room as I finished setting the table. Evelyn was in her element, chatting with the relatives, dropping little hints about how she'd had to step in to teach Lily a lesson. Jessica, the place looks lovely, Evelyn said with that fake warmth that made my skin crawl. You really outdid yourself tonight. Oh, I wanted everything to be perfect, I replied, barely containing the edge in my voice. We have so much to discuss. David, who had finally come around to see things my way after listening to all the evidence I'd gathered, gave me a slight nod. He knew what was coming, and for once, he wasn't going to protect his mother. As everyone sat down, I took a deep breath and began. 
Thank you all for coming tonight. I wanted to talk about something very important, something that concerns Lily. You all know that Lily has been through a lot lately, I started, glancing at my daughter who was sitting beside me, her new short hair covered by a pretty scarf. But what you don't know is exactly what happened. Evelyn shifted in her seat, her eyes narrowing slightly. Jessica, I'm sure whatever it is, it's been dealt with. Let's not dwell on the past. Oh, I intend to deal with it, Evelyn, I said, locking eyes with her. In fact, I want everyone to hear exactly how you dealt with it. Before she could respond, I pulled out my phone and played the recording I'd secretly made during one of her visits. The room filled with Evelyn's voice, cold and detached, as she explained to me why she thought it was necessary to shave Lily's head to teach her respect. The silence that followed was deafening. Evelyn's face went pale, but I wasn't done. You see, this isn't just about what happened to Lily. It's about years of manipulation and control. And I'm not the only one who suffered. I looked around the table at the other family members, many of whom had their own horror stories about Evelyn's behavior. If anyone else here has something to say, now's the time. My brother-in-law, who had always kept his distance from Evelyn, finally spoke up. You know, she did the same thing to my son years ago. Not shaving his head, but making him feel worthless because he wasn't living up to her standards. Another relative chimed in. She's been like this forever, controlling everyone, making us feel like we owe her something. I'm glad someone finally stood up to her. Evelyn's eyes darted around the room, realizing she was losing control of the situation. This is ridiculous. I was just trying to help. Help? By traumatizing my daughter? I cut her off. This ends now. I've already filed charges against you for child abuse and emotional distress. The police will be here soon to take you in. You can't be serious, she hissed, her voice low and venomous. You're going to regret this, Jessica. No, Evelyn, I replied, my voice steady. You're the one who's going to regret it. The police arrived shortly after, and Evelyn was taken away in front of the entire family. The look on her face as she was let out in handcuffs was something I'd never forget. It wasn't satisfaction I felt, though. Just a sense of relief that Lily and I were finally free of her. In the days that followed, the case against Evelyn became highly publicized. There was no way she could escape the consequences this time. David and I cut all ties with her, focusing on rebuilding our family. It wasn't easy, but with Evelyn out of our lives, the house felt lighter, more peaceful. Lily started to smile again, her confidence slowly returning as we reassured her that she was safe. As for Evelyn, I made it clear to everyone that there would be no reconciliation. She had made her choices, and now she had to live with them. There was no forgiveness for what she had done. In the end, it was just me and Lily, stronger than ever moving forward without the shadow of Evelyn hanging over us. The scars would take time to heal, but we were on the right path. For the first time in a long time, I felt like we were truly free. And that's the end of the story. So here's a question for you. Do you think Jessica was right to cut Evelyn out of their lives completely? Or should she have left some room for forgiveness? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you think. And if you enjoyed this story, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Thanks for watching.